Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to introduce quadratics, okay? The word quadratics you've heard of in math too. It's one of the big things we do in math too. Might not remember it, but we do talk about quadratics, quadratic functions, okay? So what is a quadratic? Well, a quadratic is this. If two is the highest exponent, it's a quadratic, okay? So if it has an exponent, something if there's an exponent there and it's two x squared y squared something like that something to the second power if that's the highest exponent it's what we call a quadratic okay so that's what we're looking at today we're looking at quadratic functions so let's go through the things we've been through so far so far we've covered constants and linear okay so what is a constant a constant is something that never changes so example of a constant would be something like y equals three, x equals negative four, right? No variables or three and four, there's no variable with them. There's no variable attached. Means they're just negative three and positive, or negative four and positive three, right? Those guys look like this up here. They're either going straight up and down or left and right, okay? So let me show you a picture. You don't have to draw this, but I wanna show you a picture. This guy right here. Is that guy increasing or decreasing? It's doing, yeah, it's not neither, right? What is it doing? Staying the same, right? Constant, it's staying the same, right? Same thing with this guy. Let's look at, look at this guy right here. The red guy. Is the red guy increasing or decreasing? It's kind of the same thing, right? Some people look at, oh, it's increasing, arrow up. But then other people say, arrow down, decreasing, right? It's kind of doing both, neither. They're constants, right? So if a guy looks like this, we say x equals something. If a guy looks like this, oops, no, that's the wrong way. We say uh, y equals something. Over here, it's x equals something, okay? That's a constant. Something that doesn't increase, doesn't decrease. Stays the same, okay? Next thing we did was we talked about linear. That's what we just finished, the chapter we just finished, the one we took a test on last Friday. That was all linear stuff, right? You guys, when you guys graphed, those are straight lines, right? You guys made straight lines, right? Some of them were dotted or some of them were dashed, some of them were uh, solid lines, but they were linear, right? So you had things like y equals two fifths x minus one y equals negative x plus four, things like that, right? That's what we just finished. Now we're gonna get into quadratics, quadratics, which is the next level. So these things are gonna look like this. y equals two x squared minus three x plus one. What's the difference between a constant and linear? What's the difference in the way they look? What's the difference? What's a, what's a difference that kind of stands out between these guys and these guys? Something that stands out to you. There's more, there's more variables, right? There's two instead of one, right? Over here, we just have y equals x equals, but over here, they're kind of mixed, right? This guy right here, what power is this guy right here? What exponent power is he? Yeah, a lot of people say zero, but no, one is right. You guys are right. This guy has a power of one. What about this guy up here? 
what is three? It doesn't have an X, right? So it's actually zero power. So now quadratic, what is the highest exponent power there? What is the highest? Yeah, two, right? That's what quadratics are, okay? So they don't look like graphs. Well, or sorry, they don't look like lines when we graph them. They look like these two. Or at the bottom of the page, they look like parabolas. That's what they look like, okay? After we're done with quadratics, cubics. We're gonna get into cubics. What do cubics look like? They look like something like this. X cubed plus four X squared minus three X plus seven. More parts, right? More parts to it. But the highest exponent power is three. That's why it's a cubic, okay? The highest exponent power right here is three. And then quartic, we'll do those two. X to the fourth plus three X squared minus seven X plus 11. Right, those guys there. That's what it means. When the highest exponent power changes, that's when you get another type of function. They look different, okay? So that's what a quadratic is. Today, we're not gonna do any adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. You're not gonna have to use a calculator for one thing. We're gonna do a lot of analysis. Analysis is looking at what's already there. Looking at what, that, what at, it's already there, but looking a little deeper. That's what we're gonna do today, okay? So let's look at some parts first. Let's look at some parts. So parts of a quadratic. Part properties is a fancy word for parts. So we have some parts here. M mine's color coded, yours isn't, but mine is color coded. So when I talk about color, the color of something, just look at mine, okay? So first of all, the graph is the red guy. The graph is the red guy, okay? So it doesn't write, but there's supposed to be arrows here going up like this, okay? This is the y-axis here. This is the x-axis, okay? So let me highlight those because it's kind of hard. Sometimes those guys don't. The y and the x, x and the y-axis, okay. So first of all, the green one on mine, is what we call the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry. What do you notice about the axis of symmetry in green? What's a couple things you notice about it? What's one thing, Bruno? It splits it in half, right? If I were to cut right here, this guy would be the exact same as this guy, right? Splits it in half, what else? Saw another hand up, what else do you notice? What else, yeah, Aubrey? It's a constant, right? It's one of these guys here. It's a constant, right? So when we talk about the axis of symmetry, it's always gonna be X equals, good. I like that one. <coughs> yeah, that's it. Which dot does it go through? The vertex, always the vertex, right? It always goes to the vertex. That's how you know where it is, okay? Next one, next one is the Y-intercept. The y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. It's a dot, right? Zero, that one's at zero, negative two. Okay, the y-intercept. The next one, it's got a lot of names to it. I put them all up here because you just don't know what you're gonna see. Sometimes they call them roots. Sometimes they call them x-intercepts. Sometimes they call them solutions. Sometimes they call them zeros. Which one are they? They're all of them. It just depends. That's why I put it in your notes so that you always have in your notes to look at. So if you forget, okay? Those are these guys here, these dots here. It's where it crosses the x-axis. Sometimes they're called x-intercepts. Sometimes they're called roots. Sometimes they're called solutions or sometimes they're called zeros, just depends, okay? And then the last one we didn't talk about, we kind of talked about the vertex, right? The vertex, the vertex. This is a minimum here. Why is that dot a minimum as well? Why is it called a minimum as well? Why do you think? Robert? It's the lowest point, yeah, exactly. Arrows are pointed up, so it's the lowest point, right? 
But if you look over here, this guy here, you don't have to turn your paper over, you'll do it in a second, but this guy right here, is it gonna have a is this guy gonna have a minimum? No, why not? It's because if I tried to find the bottom of this guy, I wouldn't stop looking because of those arrows, right? Arrows mean they go forever down, right? If they go forever down. I'm going to have to go deep, dive deep, dive deep, and I'll never find it, right? But I will find the top. So if it's a top to it, we call it a maximum. So sometimes we'll have a minimum, sometimes we'll have a maximum. They won't have both. Quadratics don't have both, okay? Okay, let's see anything we missed there. That's about it. That's about it. Okay, so let's turn it over. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill in the table. Like I said, we're not doing, today is not a lot of math in terms of adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, isolate the variable, divide both sides by negative two. That was that, we'll, we'll do that, but not today. Today, what we're going to do is identifying things. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is graph A. We'll do graph A together, graph B together. If you guys want to, like by C, I'll let you guys do it on your own. But for right now, let's just do A, okay? So the vertex, first thing for graph A, I'm going to go label that. That's right there. The vertex, is that a point? Which point is that? Negative one, negative four, yep. Okay, negative one, negative four is that dot. That's where I find that dot. That's the vertex, right? The next one is the maximum value or minimum value. Here's the thing, it'll only have one of them. So this guy here, graph A, is it gonna have a maximum or minimum? Does it have a floor or does it have a ceiling? It's got a minimum, right? It's got a minimum. So what do we do for maximum on this one? You just draw a line. It's not gonna have a maximum. Maximum doesn't exist for that guy. So when we talk about a minimum, it's right there at that dot, right? But we only talk, we only want the Y value. I only want the Y value of the vertex. I only want the Y value. The Y value is negative four. So the minimum is negative four. It's not the actual dot. It's the Y value, because isn't the Y the one that measures up and down? The X doesn't. The X measures side to side. Okay. Okay, so now what I want you to do now is go sketch the axis of symmetry. Don't have to write any, don't put anything in the box yet. If you want to, go for it, but go sketch it. Where is it going to be? Where is that green line from the front going to be? Where is it going to be? Sketch it. Hopefully you put it right there. Always goes through the vertex and, it, and it's always a vertical line up and down. So now what we have to do is we have to give it a name. Well, graphs that look like the green one, we always say they're X equals because they only pass through X. This guy right here, the green guy is never going to pass through the Y. The Y axis is right here. It's never going to cross this line here. It's going to be parallel to it. So it only crosses the X. Which X does it cross? Negative one. So we say X equals negative one. Okay. Y intercept, Y intercept, where does it cross the Y axis? What dot, the, where, where does it cross? Right there, right? That's at zero, negative three. Okay. X intercepts, X intercepts slash root slash zeros. Where does it cross the X axis? Well, it crosses one right there and one right there, right? So those two dots, one of them is at negative three comma zero, 
and one of them is at one comma zero. So it's got actually two x-intercepts. Okay. Okay, so the next group is maybe something you've heard of, maybe something you've never heard of. Increasing, decreasing interval. If something is increasing, which way is it going? Up. If something is decreasing, it's going down. That's the first thing. Interval. What is an interval? Give you a hint. We're in an interval right now, right? Uh, school starts at 8.30. It gets out at 3.35. But you're not in one place during that time, right? What do we call intervals at school? Class, periods, blocks, whatever you want to call it, right? So we're in diff right now. We're in third. We're in third period three interval from 10.42 to 11.47, right? Uh, when the bell rings, you're going to go to period four. That's the next interval. They're parts of a whole. Parts of a whole. Right. So pretty much increasing interval is saying, where is this graph parabola increasing? So this is how you tell. Let me erase these guys here since we're done with those. Where if I were to draw this guy with a pen or, or not draw it, um, trace it. When is my pen going up? When is my pen going down? That's pretty much where they're asking. When does it go up? When does it go down? So if I were to start up here, my pen's going down, right? When does it change to going uphill? What X value? What X value does it change to going uphill? Not Y value. What X value does it, does it change? Negative one, right? At this place right here. At this dot right here, that's where I change. I went from going downhill, and then at negative one is where I changed to increase. How do I write that as an interval? This is how you write it. Increasing. Where did I start increasing at? X value. Negative one X value, right? So we're going to put negative one comma when do i stop increasing so when do i stop going up never right infinity infinity so i would put infinity there sideways eight so decreasing Where does it stop decreasing? Let's start with stopping, because stopping is probably easier. Where does it stop decreasing? Negative one again, right? That's where it switches, right? From decreasing to increasing. Here's the question. Where does it start decreasing? Close. It's actually going to be negative infinity. It's actually going to be negative infinity. So watch, watch with your eyes up here. Watch with your eyes first. Because this is where it gets a little bit, what, confusing? You know, like, what just happened? Okay, so from here, we're good here, right? Starts going up at negative one and then goes up forever positive infinity. Why is this guy here start at negative infinity? Why do I start it at negative infinity? So the answer here is actually negative infinity. Why is the answer to decreasing negative infinity to negative one? And not positive. Is it coming from the top? It's coming from the top, right? It started way up there. So why is the answer negative infinity? Does anyone know? It's going down. It's going down. But that's not the reason. You're close. You're getting there. Was this guy an x value or a y value? Was negative 1 an x value or a y value? x value, right? So this guy has to be an x value. They both have to be X's, right? We're coming from the left side of the, we're coming from the left side over here, right? What type of X values are over here on the left side? Negative. So I'm coming from the negative side. That's why it's negative infinity. Because we don't look at the Y's. 
For a lot of these, we don't care about the Ys. I just care about the Xs. Okay. Okay, so that's the first one. Increasing is where am I going uphill? Decreasing is where am I going downhill? The next one is positive interval and negative interval. Interval's the same, but positive and negative. Well, isn't positive increasing and negative decreasing? No, not necessarily. Positive is, where is it above the x-axis? Negative is, where is it below the x-axis? That's what I'm asking on these, okay? So let's take a look at this guy here. I'm gonna highlight them. Highlight them just like I did before. I'll use different colors though. So here, I'm up here. Am I above the x-axis or below the x-axis? Above, and I'm gonna stop right there, right? Because I go further down. If I go further down, that would be below, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna be over here. I'm a below the x-axis, right? And then there, I stop being below, right? And then what happens afterwards? I go back to above, right? So the blue is where I'm positive. The kind of the tan color is where I'm negative. I have to express that as an interval, okay? So let me start, let's start with the easier one. The, let's start with the, um, the tan color. That's the negative, right? X value, just the X value. Where is it negative? From what X value to what X value? Negative three to positive one. I'm gonna put negative three, positive one, done. Positive interval is a little more difficult because first of all, there's two of them, right? There's two of them, there's two intervals. Secondly, secondly, sometimes it's kind of hard to see where they start and where they stop. Okay, so let's start with the first one. This guy right here. I'm focusing just on this guy right here. Where does it stop being positive? What X value does it stop being positive? Negative three. So that's going to be the end of our first interval. Where's the start of it? Where's the start where this guy starts being positive? Ne X value, negative infinity, negative infinity. It's coming from this side, that's the negative side. So negative infinity. Now let's do the other blue guy. Where does this guy start being positive? where X is one. Where does it stop being positive? Positive infinity, good. Okay, so let's, let me write that. Down. I have it on the board, but let me write this in. Positive, let's see, increasing means uphill, going, uphill. Decreasing means going downhill. Positive means above x-axis. Negative means below x-axis. Okay. Last two, domain and range. Domain and range, hopefully they kind of sound familiar. You might not remember what domain and range do or what they are, but at least hopefully you semi-remember. You've heard those words before.
domain. This is what a domain is. A domain wants to put a box around this graph here. So let me highlight it again, but in a different color. A domain wants to put a box around the yellow guy. Fit it in a box, a box big enough so it doesn't burst through the box. So domain says, I want to put sides of a box in there, sides. I want a box so I can put side. Where is the sides of the box going to be? So for example, could I put the sides here and here? Could I put the sides of the box there or would it burst through? It burst through, right? Okay, so if I can't put them there, could I move them out a little bit, like here and here? Could I move the sides of the box there, or would it burst through? Burst through, right? How far out do I have to move those red lines so that it would never burst through? Or could I? Or will it always burst through? It's yeah, it's always going to burst through. So I can never put sides on a quadratic because it would always burst through. So if it always bursts through, where are those red sides going to be? They're going to be a negative infinity and positive infinity. That means there are no red lines. If you if something exists from negative infinity to positive infinity, it means you're never going to put red lines. You're never going to be able to put red lines and box it on the sides. Okay. Range. Range is the same thing, but instead of putting a box, putting the sides on the walls, putting walls on the sides, it's putting top and bottoms. Top and bottoms. So the yellow guy, where is it going to have a bottom? Start with the bottom first. Where is it going to have a bottom at? Negative four, right? The, the bottom is going to be at negative four. Range is the only one we use y values. Everything else we use x. Interval, increasing interval, decreasing interval, positive interval, negative interval, domain. We always use x's. Range is the only one we use y's. So from negative four, that's the bottom of the box, right? There's nothing going to go below negative four. Nothing's going to cross that line. It's not going to go back down, right? Where's the top of the box going to be? Yeah, because it's always going to burst through the top, right? This guy's always going to break through the top. So this one we put positive infinity. Okay. All right, now we're gonna do the second one together. Second one looks different. Has the same parabola shape, but this time arrows are pointed down. Okay, so let's do B together. All right, C I'll let you guys do on your own, but B I'm going to do with you guys just so that we're on the same page, okay? So start with vertex first, vertex. Vertex this time is gonna be up here. Three, zero. What's the minimum value going to be? What's the minimum value going to be? The Y value of the vertex. What is the Y value of the vertex? Zero. Zero. That guy just comes straight down. It always does that. Is this one going to have a minimum or is it going to have a maximum? Graph B. Graph B, I should say. Is it going to have a bottom or is it going to have a top? Top, right? So it's a maximum. It's top of the hill. So minimum. Put them in the wrong box. Maximum value is zero. Sorry, this guy won't exist because it doesn't have a it doesn't have a minimum. 
B doesn't have a minimum. It's got a top of the hill. Okay. Axis of symmetry. Where is that white line or the green line that cuts everything in half? Right there. Always starts X equals. And this one's going to go through three. Okay, where does it cross the x-axis? Or sorry, where does it cross the y-axis? Zero, negative nine. Where does it cross the x-axis? Does it cross the x-axis? Doesn't cross over, but where does it touch? Touch or cross? Three, zero, vertex, right? It touches there, it's okay, touch is okay. Cross, touch, same thing in our case. Okay. All right, so we're done with those. Now we're gonna go back to increasing, decreasing, positive, negative, the intervals. Okay, so increasing, going uphill. I'm going uphill here, I'm going uphill, I'm here, I'm going uphill, I stop right there. So I stop at three, right? I stop at three. Well, what X value did I start going uphill? X value, not Y value, X value. What X value did I start going uphill over here? Negative infinity, negative infinity. Okay. Wait, yep, that's right. Decreasing, where, and then I switched, right? I switched at three and started going downhill. So three is where I started going downhill. And where did I finish going downhill? X value. What X value would I finish going downhill? Where I can pick up my pencil, I'm done. Yeah, I never, I would never be able to do that because it would be infinity. One is positive infinity, one is negative infinity because those are X values, X values. Let me write that in. These guys here, X values. We use X values for their intervals. We use X values. Actually, I should go down even further. The only one I use, this guy, this guy is the only one I'm gonna use Y values. Range is the only one I look at the Y. Everything else I look at the X. Okay. Positive means above the X axis. Positive means above the X axis. Where am I above the X axis? for B. So at three zero, do I actually go above? So at three zero, I'm definitely not negative, right? At three zero, at this point right here, I'm definitely not negative, but I do I cross over to the positives? No, right? So is there anywhere else where I'm actually above the x-axis? No. So if there is no area, you just kind of put a line through, just like we did before. There is nothing. Doesn't exist. Okay. Below the x-axis. Where am I below the x-axis? So let's see. I'm below here. 
here, here, and then I stop because I'm on, and then I'm below here, here, and here. <coughs> so I'm below the x-axis on the blue. What about that dot there that I made earlier, that yellow? Is the yellow above or below the x-axis? Or neither? Neither, right? Neither. Yeah, so three, I'm at neither. So there's two areas for blue. There's two areas for blue. So I'm going to have two intervals for blue. So the first blue one, which x values do I go to? I go from negative infinity to 3. And then I pick up at 3 and go to positive infinity. Because at three itself, I wasn't above, I wasn't below, I was right on. Okay. Okay, domain, sides. Where do I put the sides of the box? Where do the sides of the box go so I can box this guy in? Would they burst through those sides? <coughs> Would they burst through these sides? Oh, excuse me. Where are the side? Where would the sides go so that so the so the parabola doesn't burst through? Mm -hmm. I would have to go as far as possible. And here's a hint: every single parabola will always have a domain from negative infinity to positive infinity. <coughs> if it's a parabola it's always going to have a negative infinity to positive infinity. That one's always going to be true. So you could even put this guy right here. Negative infinity, positive infinity. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, domain and range. Domain and range. Top and bottom. So where is the top going to be? Where is the bottom going to be for this guy? The last one. This is the only one we use y's, right? So what y value is the top? Zero, right? Zero. Zero is the top. Zero is the top y value. So that's the top we put second. We put the bottom first. Where would the bottom be? Where would the bottom of this guy be? Where would the bottom be so that it doesn't go through the bottom? Yep, there would be at... Negative infinity, negative infinity. Okay. Okay, so what I want you to do, we have, let's see, we have about 17-ish minutes. I'm going to give you about five to 10 minutes to do this last one on your own, graph C, fill it in, and then we'll go over it, and we'll be done. Okay, so take about five, seven minutes, fill it in. We'll go over it. If you get it wrong, you can just erase it. Okay. Okay, so I filled out the first, was it six of them? Vertex is at 2, 1, no minimum, but this is for graph C, for graph C, the bottom one. The axis of symmetry is at x equals 2. Y intercept, it crosses the y axis at 0, negative 3. Where does it cross the x-axis at 1, 0, and 3, 0? Nice stop there. Okay. Next one is where is it increasing? Okay, so let me highlight. <clears throat> increasing. So it's increasing here, increasing here, increasing here, stops. So what x values did I just cover? Well, I started off the graph, so that's negative infinity to positive 2. So that's negative infinity to positive two. Okay. Decreasing interval, decreasing intervals, the, the rest from two to positive infinity. A lot of people think, oh, you're going down. So it's negative infinity 
No, because that's the Ys. I only care about the Xs for these guys. So it's from two to positive infinity. Okay. Okay. Positive interval, where is it above the x-axis and where is it below the x-axis? Above the x-axis would be right here, this little area right there, from one to three. From one to three, it's above the x-axis. So I would say one comma three. That means the rest of it has to be below here and here. So what X values does it cover? Well, it covers from negative infinity up to one, and then from three to positive infinity. Okay. Domain is always the same because it's a parabola. Negative infinity, all real numbers. Another way of saying that is all real numbers. Another way of saying negative infinity to positive infinity is all real numbers. You guys have probably heard that before. It's the same thing. Okay, so where's the range? Where is the bottom? Where is the top? Well, this guy has a top. The top X value, or Y value, sorry, is going to be 1. But we always start with the bottom. Since it's pointed arrows down, it's not going to have a bottom. It's always going to burst through that bottom. So that's negative infinity. All right. So tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to do more practice. I'm going to give you some practice on your own. They're going to ask you all of these things, increasing, decreasing, make it maximum value, negative or uh, minimum value. Okay. They're going to ask you all those types of things. There's no math to be done. It's all analyzing the graph, analyzing, figuring out where. Okay. Sometimes that's harder than actually doing the math. So just got to be careful with that. All right. Okay. So if you are in the back, there should be some tape behind you on and the desks behind you for your row. So tape that in.